James said we ought to count it all joy even when we fall into divers temptations or to the various testings or various trials because what James recognized is when I'm connected to God that even in my trials God is working something on my behalf and so joy is an internal reality an internal state of being that's not relegated or not confined or incapacitated by external factors so my joy is based on who God is and what God is doing in my life and that's what, not what happens in my surroundings so you can have joy no matter what, what you're going through well, that's to be a blessing, a life to make a difference. There's hope for my brother, hope for my sister, life more abundantly. Hi friends, I'm E. Dewey Smith and I'm so excited to have you to tune into this segment of the Living Hope broadcast. We're trying to carry the good news of Jesus Christ, biblically based teaching all over the world. And your support has been tremendous. I need your continued support. Call a friend, call a neighbor, pick up a phone and support the ministry. Let me hear from you. Reach out to us by social media or I just need to hear from you to see how this ministry has had a positive impact on your life. This message today is a part of a series entitled Joy in the Fire because we can have joy in the fire. Today's message is entitled joy after something that was near fatal. How do you have joy when you've gone through something that almost took your life? Get your Bibles and be blessed by the Word of God. It's going to change you today. Be blessed. I almost lost my mind. The shame and the pain of what I went through. But I got a message to write to the 12 scribes and 12 tribes scattered throughout all the world. And I got one word for y'all. Hello. You still don't get it. And I'm glad you don't get it because that's why God sent me to give you. Because every child of God, you know you've grown when you get a hello anointing. I'm going to shout this morning off of Jesus later, but right now my first shout is on hello. Matter of fact, the next time you see somebody who you knew tried to kill you, just walk up to them and say, hello. Because hello says, everything you try, you can hear my voice. I'm still greeting you, which means everything you thought you were going to do to me. You didn't take me out. You didn't take my mind. The fact that I can tell the enemy, hello, lets me know I'm still here by the grace of God. Is there anybody around this house this morning got a hello in your spirit? Matter of fact, look at your bills. When you get back to the crib, just say, hello. I didn't know how the Hades I was going to pay this rent back in 2009. Lost my job, recession, interest rate went through the roof, but the fact that my keys still work. Hello, y'all ain't saying anything. See, some of y'all can't say that, but when you like I have been, some of y'all understand buying a car and not paying the note in three months. So you hide it in the garage of your grandma down your auntie's house. And every time you walk up to it, you scared somebody gonna have a truck about to back it out. But now you can walk out to the, to the car, you can call the people, let them know, I'm at the church, I'm in section B. Look me up, baby, it ain't three months behind. It may be 15 days late, I just pay a late fee. You can't take it hello can anybody look at your life and say I got a hello in my spirit is there anybody around here that ever had cancer in your body it was a stage three or stage four and the doctor said, we don't see how you gonna make it the next time you go say hey doc I'm still here somebody say hello when you go to work tomorrow don't say good morning say hello I'm here, the part of start until I get here. He washed over me all last night, hello. He kept me in my right mind, hello. I had gas in the car, hello. I got shoes on my feet, hello. That may not shot some of y'all, but I've done stuff in my life. I don't deserve to have a hello in my mouth. I should have been gone, would have been gone, could have been gone. But the fact I'm here after all my past, I give God praise over one word, hello. Won't you call the folk who said you weren't gonna make it? Won't you call your ex? Get your phone out and just text them, hello. You got my text, I'm paying my phone bill. It's an iPhone 6, buddy. Hello, I'm still here. 
sometimes if you look at the bad, the bad can put you in a difficult circumstance. And so my, my reality is I've stopped uh, telling um, God how big my problems are and I start telling my problems how big my God is. And that gives me a joy, an internal state of rejoicing, peace and tranquility in spite of human circumstance. You can have joy after near failure because we're here in spite of our past. Hello. But not only, not only we're here in spite of our past, secondly, we have joy after failure because we have a spiritual perspective. Yeah, the hello is I'm here in spite of my painful past. What do you mean the spiritual perspective? J James told me to tell you, listen, I'm the brother of Jesus and I jacked him up. I wasn't there for him, but hello. That lets you know I'm here in spite of my past, but let me give you a, spirit, a spiritual perspective. Yes, I messed up. He said, but my brethren, count it. Shireen is that Greek word there. It comes from the word charis in Greek. It's a transliteration of charis, favor. He, he says, I want you to count it Shireen, listen, all joy, not, not mixed joy, not saturated or diluted joy, not your, not your Uncle Bunny got the cold water on the right and the hot water on the left in your shower. Count it all <laughs> joy. What he says is when you're surrounded by trials. These are external tests. He says, I want you to consider it joy. Hold joy when you fall into a myriad of testings. He said, they are tests of your stamina. My God, somebody hear that. Have an attitude, I'm going to be joyful, not necessarily for the testing, but in it. That word, when you fall, it's the same word that's used in Luke 10, 30, about the parable, when the man fell among robbers. The same Greek word, uh, that when you fall among testings. Same word in Luke 10, 30, when you fall amongst robbers, when you fall amongst testings. Have an attitude of joy. When you're scattered amongst the pagans, he said, here's the problem, some of you, Focus on when you escape the test. He said the shout is not for you escaping the test. The shout is when you got enough maturity and strength to endure the test. Somebody help me here. He said you can shout because it is a test of your stamina. I, I, it didn't make sense because he says all my life I was tested. James, I thought it was just me being disobedient. He said, but I've had a lifetime of tests. James, how can you tell us to consider joy when you're amongst divers' tests? And this is what James told me. He said, because all of my tests were preparing me to be qualified to have my own missive in the New Testament. Every test, when I look back on it, it qualified me to be able to help you in your life. Everybody hadn't doubted every eye and crossed every T. Somebody in the book needs to be included who spent their time running from God. He said, but the tests were preparatory for another dimension. Don't you turn that channel. I'll be right back. You're watching Living Hope. I've been through some stuff. And what I know is working for me staying power. So guess what? I got perseverance now. Sometimes you be flimsy and wandering and can't figure out, no, no, I ain't sure. Uh, I hope it work out. I'm be praying for you. We're going to just have to see how this going to come out. Uh, yeah, I'm believing God for you. We just going to have to know. Let's get a plan B. Let me tell you something. I moved to a point in my life Ain't no plan B. 
No matter who you are, you can find joy in the last chapters of your narrative. Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. explains that joy can be found in the most unlikely places and reveals how you can find joy in the fire. Some people will not reach for higher because they're satisfied with the status quo. And so sometimes in order to get more out of you, God may have to agitate you to get you to your best. Yeah, count it joy. Because it simply means God thought enough of you to send you an invitation. He's been watching your film and watching the stuff you've been able to endure. And I got a good word for you. If you can shout during the test, uh, you're going to get ready to be a first round draft pick. James said we all count it all joy because what James recognized is when I'm connected to God, that even in my trials, God is working something on my behalf. Learn to count it all joy with this life-changing series. Order your copy today when you visit our website or call 877-894-HOPE. I'm like, God, you got to help me with this. Give me an illustration. I don't understand how to count it joy when I'm falling amongst robbers, like in Luke 10, 30, when I'm falling amongst divers' tests. How do, how, how do I have joy when I'm being tested on every, with every turn? He said, you missed, this, you missed this, the significance or the spiritual perspective. I said, what's the perspective? He said, well, do it. You like football? I said, yes. He said, well, what happened significant in the NFL the past couple weeks? I said, I don't know. You, you tell me, Holy Ghost. Don't play games. <laughs> he said, well, do it. They had something in Indianapolis that was called the NFL Combine. I said, okay, I get that Holy Ghost. He said, so, I said, so I don't still get the, I don't get the, I don't get the illustration. What is it all about? He said, well, dude, what's the NFL Combine for? For whom is it? I said, well, it's for people, players who are coming out of college, uh, four years, or either those who are leaving after three years of eligibility, uh, those who have declared for the draft and been invited. He said, absolutely. He said, well, can everybody come to the combine? I said, no. Only a particular select few can come to the combine. I said, okay, I get that, God. I said, I said what are you trying to say? He said, what happens at the combine? I said, well, they go through, uh, they, all the scouts and teams show up uh, to get their measurables. He said, well, what do they do at the combine? I said, well, they weigh them. Yeah. I said, they do tests on their IQ. I said, yes. So what else do they do? Do I say, well, they, 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 they measure their height, their weight. They measure their vertical jump. Uh, they see how much they can bench, bench press 225 pounds. They test the quarterbacks for the ability to throw, the wide receivers for the ability to catch. They do the 40-yard dash. They do the bench press. They do go through grueling tests. I said, yes. He said, but you know what? They are joyful about the combine. Some of them leave school the last semester early to hire trainers to get ready for the combine. But the combine is grueling. But they have a smile on their face about the myriad of grueling tests. Many of them are, are willing to sacrifice their education to go to a local area in Atlanta or Phoenix or Miami and California to get themselves prepared for the combine. And the combine is nothing but a myriad of different tests by invitation only. Okay, okay, I know, I know y'all missed the hour. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I, know you, I know you missed the hour. I said, so I don't get this shout. He says, well, here's the reality. When you fall amongst your own soteriological tests, it is analogous to your own pneumatological combine. I said, I don't get it, Holy Ghost. He said, it means that these tests, everybody has to go through if you've been invited. I said, I don't get it. He said, well, they've been watching your film all year long to see do you have what it takes to be invited because to make it in the NFL may guarantee you a contract first rounders get this much money you might get signed to a team you can make money to live out up to dream so you getting ready to be drafted my god y'all not feeling me here so you got to go to through the grueling tests at the combine in order to qualify you for the draft which means the tests are necessary for your promotion and the better you do at the test then your stock value can go up if you successfully handle the combine Okay, let me help somebody who's sleeping slow and lost your hour last night. Some of you wonder why you being tested, why you being pinched, why you being prodded, why your legs being stretched, why your head being twisted, why your ankles are sore, your back are sore, you're about to give up. God told me to tell you, count it joy. 
because it simply means God thought enough of you to send you an invitation. He's been watching your film and watching the stuff you've been able to endure. And I got a good word for you. If you can shout during the test, uh, you're going to get ready to be a first-round draft pick. I wish somebody open your mouth and say, you talking about me, do it. My God, I've been tested so much in my life, and I qualify to be a millionaire. I qualify for some endorsements. Look at these teeth. Sign me up, Colgate. I'm ready right now. Does anybody know God got more in stuff for you? Look at somebody say, be excited during the test, because it signifies you got another level coming your way. Give God some praise right now. So when you see somebody get there, stop hating. While you are playing, we are being tested. And that's why I refuse to apologize for my blessing. When God do it, when he does it, I ain't holding nothing back. I'm gonna let everybody know. People say, you think you're all that? No, God think I'm all that. He gave me an invitation. And if he bless me, I will bless the Lord. At all time. I wish you look at somebody and say, God must think a whole lot about you. That's why you're going through the test you're going through. That's why you're going through the struggle. Because God knows you can handle it. He's getting ready to promote you, put you on center stage. If you can endure the test. Let me close. Let me. I don't know this is well. This is about this is about 50 people. God told me to tell you it's draft time. Matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to get me. I'm going to get cut for a new suit. When you call my name, I'm walk on stage, dog. Put my hat on. I'm walk on stage. It, it's draft time right now. If you can handle the test, when folk try to kill you, where were you when I was preaching at 19? Where were you when I was about to lose my mind? If you can't handle my harvest, if you ain't seen my seed, somebody say, yes, Lord. God may allow difficult things and terrible things to happen to us because he has a greater level, a greater destiny. Some people will not reach for higher because they're satisfied with the status quo. And so sometimes in order to get more out of you, God may have to agitate you to get you to your best. You can have Joe after near failure when, <laughs> when he says, I'm here in spite of my past. I have a spiritual perspective. So next time you see a whole bunch of tests, just say, must be the combine. Y'all, y'all not feeling me here. Do it. You got Bible for that? Yeah, I got Bible for it. Job. Angels came to present themselves for angelic inspection. Satan was numbered with the angels. God said to Satan, Satan, what are you doing here? Satan said back to God, I've been going to and fro in the earth trying to find somebody I could jack up. God said back to Satan, Satan, let me recommend my number one draft pick. Job, have you considered him? Say, yeah, I tried to get him, but every time I try to put my nasty paws on him, he got a hedge all around him. God said, well, I've been watching this film. You can touch everything he has, but you can't bother his life. Isn't it wonderful that when God lets you be tested, it's because he knows what you can handle, and some things he's already told the devil, they're off limits. That's why you lost your job but kept your mind, because God told Satan, it's off limits. That's my number one drop pick. Let me close. Uh, I, uh, I, I. Tell your neighbor, the test just means God thinks a whole lot of you. You can't get to the cash without the combine. I'm here in spite of my pain. 
I have a spiritual perspective. The third, you, you, you can get joy after near, after near failure when you hold on to a sure persuasion. I said, hold on to a sure persuasion. James said, yeah, don't get it twisted. My life was jacked up. Mm-hmm. I dished Jesus, my mama, and God. Oh, but my, my book ain't over yet. Count it. Oh, joy. Yeah, when you're tested, that's the spiritual perspective. But here's the sure persuasion. You can count it joy knowing that that word is gnosko in Greek. It's the, that, 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 that word there is used there in the present active participle. It, it means that right now in my life, I can continue knowing. Y'all ain't, ain't feeling me. He says, this is an experiential knowledge. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is, this is not knowledge of the theoretical. This is experiential. This is experimental knowledge. See, some stuff uh, you believe because you heard. Some stuff you imagine because somebody told you. That word, that word for that is pistuo in Greek. It, 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 the derivative of the root is pistis, which means conviction or persuasion. Pistuo is believe. Uh, when I was eight years of age, I got baptized because I believed in God. Pistuo. And my granddad Jack Smith was saying, have you any rivers? Seem impossible. Have you any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things that are impossible. He'll do. I believe God specializes because Jack Smith preached it. When I was 13, I believed God would take my hand because Eddie Smith was saying, precious Lord, take my hand. But I thank God that he's moved me from Pistuo to Genosco. Pistuo is, I believe. Genosco. I don't need Jack Smith. I don't need Eddie Smith or your testimony. I have been within the crucible of human experience. I've been a lab rat and a lab rat on God's laboratory of ontological proximity. I have been in the fire. I've got the marks of Bunsen burners right now on my anatomy and on my soul. And the stuff now, I am convinced that joy can come after near failure. Not because of the theoretical, but because of the experimental. It's, in other words, I've been through some stuff. And what I know is working for me, staying power. So guess what? I got perseverance now. Sometimes you be flimsy and wandering and can't figure out, no, no, I ain't sure. Uh, I hope it work out. I'm going to be praying for you. We're going to just have to see how this going to come out. Uh, yeah, I'm believing God for you. we just going to have to know. Let's get a plan B. Let me tell you something. I moved to a point in my life. Ain't no plan B. My happiness ain't based on a plan B. He showed me what he want me to have. And I know now by experience. Not pistuo, but gnosko. Oh, God, that's when you get to joy, when I get an attitude. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. You, you, can, get, you can get braggadocious, not about yourself, but about your God. It's called gnosko. That's why Job put it this way, I know my Redeemer liveth. Isaiah said, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the faint, not neither is it weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Neither you shall faint and be weary, the young men shall utterly fall. But I know they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength.
My friends, I want you to know that your joys and your pains are working for God's glory and for your good. Help me to spread the message of hope and love across the world. I need some partners. Why don't you consider a partnership with us right now? The number's on the screen. Pick up the phone right now. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. I need your help to spread the good news of Jesus Christ all over the world. Remember, weeping does endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm out of time now. I'll see you next time. But always remember this. If you'll be good to God, then God will be good to you. You've been watching Living Hope. Peace. See you next time. No matter who you are, you can find joy in the last chapters of your narrative. Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. explains that joy can be found in the most unlikely places and reveals how you can find joy in the fire. Some people will not reach for higher because they're satisfied with the status quo. And so sometimes in order to get more out of you, God may have to agitate you to get you to your best. Yeah, count it joy. Because it simply means God thought enough of you to send you an invitation. He's been watching your film and watching the stuff you've been able to endure. And I got a good word for you. If you can shout during the test, uh, you're going to get ready to be a first round draft pick. James said we all counted all joy because what James recognized is when I'm connected to God, that even in my trials, God is working something on my behalf. Learn to count it all joy with this life-changing series. Order your copy today when you visit our website or call 877-894-HOPE. Download the new E. Dewey Smith Ministries app today in the iTunes Store or Google Play. Connect with us wherever you go on your phone, iPod Touch, or iPad. We have lots of great content to empower you. You can stream live and connect with us all within the app. Download today. Meet Dr. E. Dewey Smith in any of these great locations, Thursday, February 11th, at Livingstone College AME Zion Preaching Institute in Salisbury, North Carolina. Tuesday, March 1st, at the First Corinthian Baptist Church in New York, New York. Friday, March 4th, at Princeton Theological Seminary in Princeton, New Jersey. For more information on any of these great events, call 877-894-HOPE. Some things I used to believe, but now I know. That's why the psalmist said, you got to be still. Woo! And know that I'm God. I will be exalted above the heavens. Uh, Jesus said, my sheep. I wish I had somebody who went to YPD or Bible student. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not hear. God told me to tell you, you got to have a gnosko. And we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, I have another bill. Y'all ain't helping. But y'all got the brakes on me here. That's why right. I'm going to preach this for myself. Uh, the blind man said, one thing I know, I once was blind, but now I see. Deacon Lash Lowe saying, I know I've been changed. The angels in heaven done sign my name. Paul said, and we know that all things work.